So in yesterday's part of the story, we found out that the boy and the bear had literally just escaped from a sinking ship and they're trying to swim towards the rock that they saw on the map. This chapter is called Dry Land. When the boy awoke, the first, first thing that he saw was the bear's knees. At first he thought they were still on the Harriet, but then he recognised that the surface beneath him was stone rather than wood and remembered with a pang of guilt that the Harriet was lost. But at least the bear had got them to the island, it seemed. He felt stiff as he pushed himself part way upright, as if the hardness of the rock had somehow seeped into him, and his eyes and head were fuzzy and half asleep. Hello, bear, he said, blearily rubbing his eyes and trying to focus. Oh, hello, boy, said the bear. He was sitting on his suitcase with his back to the sea, looking down at the captain's hat in his paws. Now he put it back on his head, blinked and regarded the boy. You really did know the way then, said the boy. Of course, said the bear. We were lucky, actually. It wasn't too far. And there was an anomaly in the currents that helped us on our way. Have you had time to explore much of the land yet? Hmm, yeah. How's it look, said the boy, yawning and stretching. Eh, uh, see for yourself. The bear waved a paw over the boy's shoulder. The boy turned his head and saw for himself. It wasn't an island, it was just a rock. There wasn't a single tree or plant to be seen. It wasn't even a very big rock. It certainly wasn't a pretty one. And it was almost as cluttered as the Harriet had been, as various bits of flotsam from the mermaid seemed to have washed up upon it. Oh, this is useless. We're on a cold, wet, ugly rock full of junk, said the boy. We're naming it after you then. The sea's over there if you prefer it, said the bear, pointing. It's roomier and it's not so dry. Take your pick. Anyway, we're not stopping long. Oh, great. Where are we swimming to next? We're not swimming, I'm building a raft. The boy took another look at the scattered bits of wood and other bits and pieces around the place. There were some reasonably intact plants and some empty barrels. There was also a section of mast with some rigging attached, so they had some rope to work with at least, and it was much more such debris floating in the waters around the rock. If they swam out a little, they could gather in some more material for the raft. He was about to suggest this to the bear when he noticed how wet his fur was. The bear had been busy while the boy had been asleep. Not much of the wood had drifted onto the rock unaided. That's a good idea, said the boy quietly. Can I help? Yee, yeah, said the bear, but I'm tying all the ropes. They worked quietly, but happily together. The boy was hungry and still tired despite his sleep, but he helped where he could. Much of the wood was too heavy for him to carry but he could roll the barrels along and sometimes he was able to hold things in place while the bear lashed them together. He did as he was told and made himself useful and the raft slowly began to take shape. And there they are. 
At lunchtime they stuffed and ate the marmalade. The boy working every last scrape of it out with the jar with his finger. Afterwards he was sleepy again. Have a nap, said the bear, spotting a yawn that the boy had tried to hide. I can do this bit on my own and I need you fresh alert when we sit still. The boy knew what the bear the boy knew that the bear could have done all of it without him really. He wanted to insist on helping, but from his sitting position it was far easier to lie down just for a moment than it was to stand up. So we lay down and found the cold, wet rock was surprisingly warm and soft. He closed his eyes just for a moment. When he opened them again, the light had changed and the bear was trying to rope to, to the mast of the raft. It looked like it was finished, more or less. That was quick, said the boy. Not really, said the bear. You've been asleep for hours and snoring. I don't snore, said the boy. Do I? Just a bit. I thought that monster's dad was coming to get us. Had me worried till I realised it was you. The boy looked hurt, but only a little. He took a closer look at the raft. It's a bit wonky looking, isn't it? He said, pointing. Well, I had to improvise a lot with such limited materials to work with, said the bear. So it's no Harriet, I grant you, but it's sturdy enough. Will it float? Of course it will float, said the bear. He looked at the raft thoughtfully. I think. Well, can't we shove it in the water and find out, said the boy. No, not yet. The tide's gone out. We'll have to wait till it comes back in. Oh, said the boy and looked away from the raft to the sea. Oh, said the boy again. The tide had indeed gone out. It had gone out rather a lot. The water level had fallen by a good 20 metres. The island they were on it turned out, was a tall column of rock, the sides of which dropped straight down to the sea. There it is. The boy looked cautiously over the edge to the distant waves and felt rather dizzy. He stepped back and sat down. That's not normal, is it? He said. It's a bit unusual, admitted the bear. It's probably down to unforeseeable anomalies in the current, said the boy. That's right, said the bear. How did you know that? Lucky guess, said the bear, said the boy. Anyway, we'll just have to wait for the tide to come in and then we'll sit off. In the meantime, we need to get the seal on. The bear had managed to salvage a tablecloth from the debris of the mermaid. He held it up for the boy to see. It's a bit small, said the boy. A bit, yes, said the bear. But it's not such a big raft. And there are a lot of holes in it, said the boy. Well, if you've got a sewing kit with you, then feel free to fix them, said the bear a little testily. But otherwise it will have to do. It's fa be fine, you'll see. He tied it onto the crossbar at the top of the mast. Then he tied the bottom corners to the base of the raft. He stood back with the boy and looked at the end result. Well, said the bear, it's not pretty, but I reckon it will go well enough. The boy could only agree. It really wasn't at all pretty.
it was ragged and scruffy and just plain funny looking but it was also oddly impressive it looked strong and safe as if it would survive weeks at sea with no trouble at all the boy wasn't entirely sure it would afloat but it was certainly confident that it wouldn't fall apart it was magnificent in this way actually he said that's pretty amazing the bear didn't say anything he was about to smile but a sudden gust of wind stopped him oh he said we bit her but it was too late the raft sail billowed up and the raft sailed off the island and dropped out of sight. The boy and the bear ran the short distance to the edge of the rock and gazed down in horror as the raft, after an elegant mid-air somersault, hit the water, rocked briefly from side to side and then sailed off at a considerable speed. It shrank away into the distance the boy and the bear watched it go well said the boy you were right about the sale and we'll find out what happens next on their adventures will they escape the rocky island <laughs>